Um, President Joe Biden is learning from Barack Obama's mistakes, and when it comes to negotiations, um, you cannot have a good you cannot have a good faith negotiation with any type of Republican with any type of Republican because they want to destroy everything. Now, never again. If you think that old dogs can't learn new tricks, then you need to take a second look at Joe Biden. Back in 2011, during the first serious Republican debt ceiling hostage crisis and the protracted negotiations that followed, um, Joe, um, President Joe Biden, at, well, actually, um, at that time, Biden would have been Vice President, and Biden and Vice President Biden undercut Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, and he wrecked and he wrecked a deal that he made that he made for a terrible one. And that was a lot of hand-wringing at the time over Biden's tendency to give away the store. So when the Republicans pulled their hostage maneuver again in 2013, um, Harry Reid stipulated that Biden needed to, stay, uh, needed to stay out of the negotiations, and the White House agreed. Um, now, the Obama administration, including um, Vice President Biden at that time, had learned their lesson. Negotiating with the extremist GOP and the debt ceiling is a very bad idea. They refused, and the, Republic, and the Republicans capitulated, sparing the country and the world... Um, and sparring, and sparing the world, um, country and the world econ the economy another jolt. Now the days of dreaming about a grand bargain were blessedly over. Um, at that time, at that time, President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden had come into office with the goal of ending the part the by ending the partisan divide once and for all by negotiating with the Republicans in good faith and taking all the thorny issues of the day off the table. Now E. J. Dion of the Washington Post explained it just before Obama was sworn in. Um, now, Obama regularly offers three telltale notions that will define his presidency, if events allow him to define it himself. Sacrifice, grand bargain, and sustainability. Um, now, listening to Obama and his, um, budget, and his budget director, Peter um, Orszag, is to hear a tale of long-term fiscal woe. The government may have, to have, may have to spend and cut taxes in a big way, but in the long run, the federal budget is unsustainable, and that's where sacrifice kicks in. There will, be, there will be signs of it in Obama's first budget and his efforts to contain health care costs and down the road and his call for entitlement reform and limits on carbon emissions. Um, his camp is selling the idea that if he wants authority for new spending, Obama will have to prove his willingness to cut some programs and reform the others. Um, the grand bargain that they are talking about is a mix and match of boldness and, prud and prudence. It involves expansive government where necessary, Balanced by balanced by tough management, unpopular cuts, and yes, eventually some tax increases. Everyone they say will have to give up something, and that one Republican came to t came to the table to negotiate on the Affordable Care Act. And when it came time for all that sacrifice and sustainability, they dug in their heels and demanded that Obama eliminate his signature achievement and cut and cut more cu taxes, or the country will get it. It was a hard-earned lesson of the first Obama term. The modern Republican Party does not act in good faith at all. They argue, they argue among themselves constantly, with the far-right faction continually up in the ante. Even when leadership has made a deal, you can't negotiate with people like this when you have a metaphorical weapon aimed at your head. Um, now, the debt ceiling is an, is an anachronistic, unnecessary procedure that should have been scrapped a long time ago. Um, the Democrats probably should have tried harder to do, to do that when they had both houses, although the Diva Twins... Ariz um, the Diva Twins, Arizona Senator Kristen Sinema, um, and West Virginia's um, Joe Manchin probably made that impossible. And those two are closet Republicans. They're not, they're, they, even though they're claimed they're Democrats, but they're closet Republicans. The nation has to pay its bills, and this formal and this formerly pro former vote is now is now often used as a political cudgel to try to force spending cuts because holding the world account holding the world economy hostage provides more leverage than the normal budget process. Um, now you may have noticed that we have never had one of these fights during the Trump years when the deficit was growing at a very fast pace, which was fucking interesting in itself, but they ha but they held both chambers of Congress during his first two years, and surely for the good of the country they could have made these same demands, but they fucking didn't. And neither did they fucking enact a budget with the, sa with the, with the spending cuts that they, are now <coughs> that, they are, that they are now insist they must be enacted or else. Now... In fact, we hardly ever talked about any of this during Trump's term, all of which proves their overwhelmingly hypocrisy on this issue and explains why Democrats are saying, talk to the fucking hand. Now today, President Joe Biden and the rest of the Democratic leadership are firmly refusing to negotiate around the debt ceiling, which, is, which as it is, it should be. And there is a process for cutting, for cutting spending, and if that's what these Republicans want to do, and it's called appropriations, 
they can negotiate night and day in the budget talks and use every trick in the book to get their way with that. And there are a few ways, but they cannot be allowed to pull this be bullshit over and over again. If they want a draconian spending cuts to happen, they have to bargain for them or win a majority and pass legislation like normal elected officials. Um, now, unfortunately, um, the Republicans once more have a great friend in the media, which is always inexplic is, which is always inexplicably drawn to the idea of spending cuts, and they are once again pushing stories of fiscal doom due to deficits. Now, weirdly, they they too didn't say shit shit about that during the Trump years, when he was running up the debt ceiling without restraint. Now, pundits love to insist that we must learn to take our medicine, uh, many of whom are um, who are well-off celebrities who will face little hardship from the sheer pain and costs of such um, of the such policies that will, that it will bring. And now, when it comes to describing the politics of um of the situation, they seem to be constitutionally incapable of accurately reporting that the Republicans are threatening to destroy the economy in order to force draconian spending cuts under a Democratic president, while the Democrats are simply doing what they do under both Republicans and Democratic presidents, paying the fucking bill. Instead, they are laying the responsibility for the potential default and the debt of Biden, who's apparently falling down on the job if he doesn't capitulate to, uh, to the insane demands of a bunch of radical extremists, who very often won't take yes for an answer anyway. But it's absurd and luckily so far that the Democrats are standing fast. Now, late Sunday night, um, Axios published a story with this headline, Congressional Democrats Splinter on Debt Ceiling Strategy. Now, apparently, a few centrist um, members of the House um, of the House um, Problem Solvers Caucus and the above-mentioned diva Joe Manchin want, want to negotiate. And that's no fucking surprise. But there are also a few Republicans who voted against Kevin McCarthy's wrecking ball of a bill that the House tried to pass last week requiring the appeal. Um, it required the appeal of Biden's signature legislation. And there are a few defections at the margins in both parties making it a wash-up. Now, overall, the Democrats are, le are hanging tough. A clean debt ceiling vote, period. It's what has to be done, unless we want, unless we want to just cash in on our chips and give d the fat fuck Donald Trump and, the tr and Marjorie Trader Green lifetime appointments to run the country. This hostage taken has to fucking stop. And the damage that they did with this gambit back in 2011 is still being felt, and the country can't afford another round of that fucking insanity. So if you like the video, you can give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, RBW King. You can also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when a new video comes out. You can also go ahead and leave a comment let me know what you think. And um, if you want to support my work even further, you can donate to my Patreon link, which you can find in the About section of YouTube. And for just a little as a few bucks a video or a month, your donation can help go a long way. And thanks for listening.